Thank you very much, Shannon. And uh, I want to commend you all for this uh, remarkably timely and remarkably important uh, discussion this evening. Uh, of course, I want to recognize my colleague, uh, Senator Whitehouse. And uh, I must say, because uh, in full disclosure, he is one of the uh, experts in the United States Senate on some of these energy policy issues. Uh, not because of Sheldon, but we all know his wife, Sandra, is really smart. And, and he does listen. Uh, but each week, each week, uh, he prepares for the Democratic Senate Caucus a essentially a newsletter about the most significant uh, environmental issues of that week. Uh, and in addition to that, he's serving on the Environmental Public Works Committee. He is immersed daily in these issues, environmental policy, and particularly the critical issue of how do we move off of a hydrocarbon economy. Thank you, Empower Brown, for what you're doing, Lily and Mervis, and uh, all of her colleagues. Uh, Wendy Lucky, thank you, too, for the Ocean State Clean Cities. This is a very important conference. Um, we all understand sort of the, you know, the, the ramifications in many different di dimensions of uh, an over-reliance on petroleum products. Uh, we saw a graphic example just uh, last year with the explosion of Deepwater Horizon. Not only uh, dramatic footage and unfortunately the death of 11 workers on the rig, but uh, huge uh, damage to the environment, to the economy. We had a precursor of that in 1996 with the North Cape oil spill. I can recall not too far away here on 95 getting a call from the Commandant of the First District Coast Guard saying we have a little problem, Senator, and rushing down to Point Judith and uh, discovering that the little problem was about 828,000 gallons of home heating oil, which caused severe problems. That's, those are just some manifestations of our reliance upon petroleum products. Um, but we also understand, and yet the panel will go into much more detail, the long-term environmental challenges that this reliance poses to us, uh, and they are consequential. And also the economic problems that, that you know, our, our biggest current account deficit is just produced petroleum that we have to buy in the world markets and ship into the United States in, in many, many different ways. Uh, one of the things that I find interesting is the, the fact that Despite the huge profitability of these oil companies, we continue to subsidize them very heavily. Sheldon and I were both at a press conference calling upon the joint committee, the super committee, uh, to take away the approximately $2 billion a year of subsidies, $21 billion over 10 years, to oil companies who are making extraordinary profits and use that, these funds in a much more productive way for our economy. That's just one example. Another example that I see firsthand as the chairperson of the, sub, uh, the Appropriations Subcommittee on the Interior is we've been trying to increase the fees that these offshore drilling platforms pay for inspections from a trivial amount to a less trivial amount. This is not a lot of money. And they stoutly refuse, even though it's in their own best interest, even though it will provide a service spread for them, better inspection, and even though it will go at least part of the way to try to avoid a destructive ep uh, episode like the uh, deep water horizon. So we're not getting a lot of cooperation from the oil and gas industry, and we have to, to move out accordingly. But there's another dimension that I want to stress. This comes from you know, my experience growing up in the Army, and that is the strategic difficulties that are created by this oil economy worldwide. Um, <coughs> We are looking at uh, a situation where uh, military analysts that I respect have suggested that if we don't reduce our alliance on oil, we're going to be at a strategic, uh, in a strategic straitjacket. For example, if the Strait of Hormuz is closed for 30 days, that narrow strip of water between Iran and uh, the Arabian Peninsula, uh, we could lose about $75 billion in GDP. Uh, it would be a significant blow to our economy and to the world economy. And basically, it puts us at the mercy of very unstable regimes. And the other aspect that has huge military consequences is the, the, the effect on the climate. Because as most climate scientists point out, 
the first real manifestations of these changes will be felt in the most vulnerable parts of the world, places that are already unstable. I just left uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. One of the problems when we talked to Pakistani ministers of their, their assembly was the, the huge floods that took place this year, on top of the huge floods that took place last year, and every time one of those natural episodes takes place, it underscores their, their governmental shortcomings, it enrages their populace because they can't get any support, it makes fertile ground for some of these <coughs> ideological um, uh, advocates that, that unfortunately we're confronting. So for many different reasons, uh, we have to stop thinking about this, not only in terms of an economic dimension, but also a national security dimension. Uh, when 11 retired generals, including Paul Curran, Paul was a few years ahead of me at West Point, Gordon Sullivan, Foreign Chief of Staff of the Army, Tony Zinni, a Marine who commanded Central Command, declared that climate change poses a serious threat to America's national security, you should begin to pay attention. I think that's pretty good advice. These are not exactly <coughs> tree huggers. In fact, I think the last tree they hugged was in Vietnam to get out of the way of incoming. <laughs> These are very serious people who understand the consequences of this reliance on oil. So if you don't, uh, un don't appreciate the economic impacts, if you don't appreciate the health impacts, which are, are, are stromatic, then I would hope, particularly some of my colleagues who are on the other side, I might appreciate the national security implications of that chart which Channing put up. But I want to commend you and thank you, and I'm going to uh, excuse myself in the part, but uh, I feel very comfortable doing so because I'm leaving in the best possible hands my colleague, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse.